Oh yes, I want to thank God for this uh, wonderful day. It is a very special moment that God has enabled us to have and uh, we cannot take it for granted. It is a special day that God has made me to come into his sanctuary and together with you where you are. I want to us to get to the Bible, uh, the book of Matthew. Uh, if you have the Bible, we can open with you. The book of Matthew, chapter number 19. Um, chapter number 19. Um, verse number 16. It says, And behold, a man came up and uh, up to him saying teacher what good deed must I do to have eternal life and I said unto him why do you ask me about what is good there is only one who is good if thou would enter life keep the commandments uh, he said unto him which ones what Jesus said, you shall not murder. Sorry, let me repeat verse number 18. He said unto him, What once? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witnesses. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself the law the young man said unto him all oh, this have i kept uh, that uh, what do i still lack jesus said to him if you would be perfect go and sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have a uh, treasure in heaven and come follow me when the young man had this he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. And Jesus said unto his disciples, Truly, I say unto you only, which with difficulty will a, will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples are this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can we can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man it this this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Uh, then Peter said unto, uh, said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Uh, Jesus said unto him, Truly, I say unto you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on this glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands for my name's sake, we receive a hundredfold, will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Uh, that is uh, the word of God. Now I may read in the um, in the King James version. In the King James version says and behold uh, one came and said unto him good master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life and he said unto him why call, callest thou me good there is one there is one there is none good but one that is God but if thou wilt enter into life keep the commandments uh, he said unto him, Which Jesus said, Thou shalt not murder, 
thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witnesses, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. The young man we saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be fact perfect, go and sell that uh, that thou hast, and and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man had that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus, uh, they said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich, a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, um, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples had it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, What who then shall be saved? Uh, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With the men, oh, this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Uh, then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and uh, followed thee. Uh, what shall we have therefore? And said Jesus, uh, and Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the generations when the sons of Ma son of man shall sit in the throne of this of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve throne thrones, judging the twelve disciples of heaven uh, of Israel, and every one that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit an everlasting life but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first for so far about the word of god let us pray father in the name of jesus i honor you i praise you god the word I've read, I pray that the Lord shall touch somebody's life. The word I've just read, it is your voice. It is your word. And it is a life-giving word. How I pray the Lord that we shall pierce our heart and divide our soul and give us a conviction towards your judgment and your word. Let your word bring good answers unto our needs we pray the Lord shall work with us together as we pray together with you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Um, brothers and sisters, I want to say that God has given us this wonderful day and, uh, and moment to come and worship his name and uh, to come and have a good time with him. Let me tell you that it is uh, very, very special uh, that many have not had. And uh, God has given you this day in order to come and serve him and to forsake everything for his sake or for his name's sake. Uh, There's a time that a young man who was a, a religious person who used to be going into his own church, uh, a war, Bernard, the Bible says that uh, he used to go into his church to worship and used to be uh, uh, making sure that the commandments are well stuck into his mind, into his brain. Uh, he comprehended everything uh, to the maximum. So the Bible says uh, that uh, he was still very young and he was practicing it uh, even where he used to be going at his worship center. Bible says uh, that uh, he came to Jesus and asked him, what shall, what shall I do in order to inherit the kingdom of God? And the Bible says that uh, Jesus told him that you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not do all sorts of uh, ten commandments that which Moses had written to the Israelites. 
and the Bible says that if you have done so, you shall now possess the kingdom of heaven. So the Bible says in verse number 16 uh, that uh, uh, Jesus and, uh, 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 and, and, and the older man came up unto him saying, Teacher, what good did must I do to have eternal life? The same way people, uh, many people are asking today what they can do in order to achieve good things into their life. People cannot allow or accept or condone or entertain bad things into their life. No one is willing to go through uh, bad things in their life. But many are looking forward in order to get good things. Uh, one of them now, as we may speak, is now eternal life. No one is willing to go to hell. And there is no one who is willing to go into the eternal fire. Only that now the ways through which they can go there or to go into the kingdom of heaven is that which is still hidden unto many of the people. So many people think that by taking or uh, studying the law, there is a way through which you can go and attain the kingdom of God. And so many people normally think that uh, just being born a good person without even sinning or beating people or either going into bo uh, 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 a uh, bar and drinking beer so that's a way of to go to heaven that's not the case uh bible says and he said unto him why do you ask me go uh, about what is good there is only one go one who is good it is who uh if uh, if you would enter life keep the commandments commandments of moses were ten uh and these ten commandments uh, it, the Bible says they were given unto the Israelites in order to hang, hang them even onto their neck. Wherever they go, they should be uh, watching at them. They should be meditating on them. They should be working and practicing them day and night. And the Bible says that I said unto him, this uh, unto him, which one said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the man, the man who was still very young said that, uh, uh, Teacher, I'm, I'm, I know of those commandments that you are telling me. I know them. I've been working with them day and night. In fact, they have, I've hanged them even onto my neck. Wherever I go, I have them. In fact, I've comprehended them. I know them. So nothing do I lack over that particular commandment. So if that is the case, am I qualifying now to go into heaven? Bible said, Jesus said, uh, okay, he said that uh, this have I kept. What do I still lack? What am I lacking? What do I uh, to do because if it's all about now the kingdom of God to, to enter into the kingdom of God, it means that I now qualify. Now, Edwin, the Bible says that um, Jesus said unto him, If you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have a treasure in heaven and, and come follow me. Praise the name of the Lord. So, if you be perfect. You need now to sell what you possess. Jesus knew that this young man was a rich person. He had not done all that which concerns to uh, feed the poor and to help those who are lacking. So the Bible says that uh, Omoni, uh, this man was to uh, go straight into heaven because he had known the commandments. He had nothing now which was lacking. But now this place... Jesus now hits onto the nail and he hits the nail onto the main wound which that this man was having a problem with. Bible says, Jesus said unto him, uh, okay, he said unto, uh, go, uh, if you would be perfect, go and sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Uh, when the when the young man had this, he went away sorrowful, for 
He had great possessions. You know, even people today, when we stand to preach the gospel, they normally think that we are targeting their wealth. They normally think that when, when we teach about offerings and givings, we normally target that which they are having in order for them to give unto us. That's not the point. Uh, this moment when Jesus had told this man, and he was still very young, he had very many things in possession. He was wealthy, somebody who had a lot of things. And you know, by then, a denarii or uh, let me say a talanta, if that's the case, talanta, one talent was equivalent to 5,000 of the shillings of today. And uh, uh, one, one, one talent was equivalent to 5,000. It is uh, a lot of money. And if it was uh, 10,000 talents, you need now to be a mathematician to calculate that it was a lot of money. That's 5,000 times 10,000. Uh, 5,000 times 10,000. You get a lot of money there. So Bible says that uh, this man had a lot of wealth. He was having a lot of possession. And uh, he was not able now to sell that which he was having to feed the poor, to give the poor. He saw as if uh, this Jesus had gone under his belt. So he could not do that in any way. So Bible says that he went sort of full and he was so much agonious and uh, uh, he was not able to adhere to what Jesus had told him. Now, you know, when this man was being told by Jesus, when he was trying to interrogate or to inquire of Jesus Christ, uh, disciples were there together. They were there listening and they were attending to each and every word Jesus was speaking to this man. Bible says that and Jesus said unto his disciples, truly I say unto you, only this difficult, uh, with difficulty, um, sorry, let me go back to two, when he had, the young man had this, he went away sorrowful for he had great possession. And Jesus said unto his disciples, truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, this man was now walking away. He was walking away from Jesus. Say that this man is so stupid. How can he tell me to do that which is not possible? Did, did those people, poor, people, poor people help me to gather this wealth? No. Did they were there when I was gathering this wealth? No. Why should I sell to give to them? Do they have any portion? Do they have any share into my wealth? No. So uh, this man, Jesus, must be stupid or he must be mad. He must be crazy. He's not so much 100% in his mind. So he walked away. And the Bible says that it is possible, uh, it is uh, impossible for a rich man to enter heaven. Uh, and I likened that again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go to, through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. You know, a needle is very much small and a camel is very big. And the Bible says that, uh, that it is easy, it is easy that a camel can still enter into the eye of a needle. It is still easy. You, you know, when Jesus was speaking these words, uh, it found when disciples were seated, they were attending to his teachings. They were really, really uh, 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 closer and very much attentive to his, teach, to his teachings. And I will say that uh, he turned into or onto his disciples and told them that now it is possible for a camel to enter into the needle of an uh, to uh, an eye of a needle than for a rich person that like like this person who is walking away who is uh, trying to see me as foolish, somebody who is not even uh, understanding what I'm trying to tell to him, who is so proud, man of ego, uh, a man with a lot of rage. So he sees that I'm, so I'm not worth, neither uh, do poor are worth to eat his wealth. So the Bible says uh, uh, that uh, he went away and he turned unto his disciples and said uh, that it is possible for a needle, uh, an eye of a needle for a camel to pass through it than uh, a rich man to enter into heaven. It is not easy now for a rich man to go into heaven. It is easy for a, a camel 
to go through the eye of a needle. Oh, hallelujah. The, uh, Jesus said to them, uh, and Peter, sorry, uh, when the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished. They were amazed, saying, who then can be saved? They disqualified themselves. They saw this that they were they were very tough qualities for somebody to get to enter or to acquire to in order to enter into heaven. So they found themselves that now they were being disqualified themselves automatically because they are also again big compared to an eye of an a needle. So it means that even them at their stature they cannot go into heaven easily. Bible says that when the disciples had this, they were amazed, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? It means they were not even near to the point of being saved or to go into heaven or for them to get through the needle for because they were together with Jesus but this one was so difficult for them it was so much hard for them to calculate Bible says that uh, but Jesus looked at them and said with the man this this is impossible but with God all things are possible it is possible for you to enter through the needle of the eye of a needle it is possible it is possible for you to enter through the eye of of that tiny needle than, than if you think of your own mind that it is impossible. Now, for man it is impossible. But now with God, it is possible that you can go through the eye of a needle. It is still possible if you will accept uh, these words and to perform them and to practice them. Bible says that Jesus looked at them and said this man, with the man it is impossible to enter into to the needle of uh, or the eye of a needle it is impossible i know even where you are there you are asking yourself how can you really go through the needle of uh, or an eye of a needle you are asking yourself how can i make it if, to, if it truly that now going to heaven which is just an open heaven you know it's just an open heaven you cannot go to, uh, through it neither can you reach there so it means that it is being compared into the eye of an ear a needle that now now for you to go to heaven, you must have passed through the eye of a needle to you for you to go there. And which is now impossible for some people like now Peter and John and Andrew and those who are together with Jesus Christ. The Bible says uh, that uh, then Peter said unto uh, uh, said in reply, uh, so see, we have left everything and followed you. Uh, what then will we have? You know. They have been put into a tiny position, into a very, a very difficult situation by Jesus Christ. You know, people like Peter had declared that they will never, never will they engage themselves into matters, home or their tradition or their culture or uh, uh, their family things. Neither will they go back and do things that they used to be doing in order for them to fulfill the desires of the family, no? Uh, you know, people like Peter had even forsaken everything. They had even forsaken the great job that which was, who were earning them a lot of money. You know, Peter, people like Peter, there are people who are fishermen. There are people who are really great men in the society by then. There are people who are earning a lot of money. They were like rich men who, who were there by then. They were possessing a lot of boats. They were possessing a lot of wealth by then. So they were having a lot of land. They were having a lot of wealth by then. And now they were saying that they forsook everything for the sake of now following Christ. Now at this moment it's now like being disqualified automatically. If it's all about now to go through the needle or the, through the eye of a needle. So it means that they are going to lose both sides because they had even left their possession in order to follow Jesus and again they are again going to lose to go into heaven for that matter. Now Peter is asking with a lot of pain that now uh, uh, see we have left everything and followed you what then will we have? 
We have followed you, Jesus. And actually, we have even uh, test declared war with our family. We have declared uh, war with our community, you know, for because we're not even adhering to what they do at their tradition, their culture. We're not fulfilling their desire. Neither are we found into their groups. Neither are we found into whatever they do. So we forsook everything. Now, they forsook everything for because they followed Christ. Now, Bible says, uh, what, uh, what then will we have? Jesus said to them now, he's now talking to the disciples. You may be one of the disciples that I'm talking to here today. You may be one of the people now born again. You say you're now born again because you're no longer a murderer, neither are you a, 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 a witchcraft, neither are you doing evil things in this life of today. You're not a murderer, neither are you a witch doctor, neither you are you uh, uh, a woman a woman monger. You are now a born again person and you are asked or you are saying or you have been in a comfort zone. You've been walking with a lot of comfortability that automatically you are gonna go to heaven. And you know it is now another step that is now counted on to you very much difficult that you need to, to undertake. You need to uh, uh, to work on to it for you to attain or to go to the even uh, the kingdom of heaven, of which personally, as I'm preaching to you again, uh, I need to go into heaven. I do not want to lose it, uh, for because the journey to heaven it has a lot of things to work on. You must work on to it. Uh, Bible says uh, that Jesus said unto them, "Truly I say unto you, in the new world, uh, where the Son of Man sit will sit on this glorious throne, who you who have followed me will also sit on twelve uh, thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and uh, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or hand, uh, lands for my sex uh, name's sake will receive a hundredfold or hundredfold fold and will inherit the eternal life. It has not been made easy for Peter now to understand. It was somehow so difficult for uh, it was being told to a rich man who feels that he's now having a lot of possession so he cannot sell his inheritance or whatever that he has in possession to give to the poor. So Jesus gave a very hard mathematics to the a rich man, so so that at least if he can do that, even though he has uh, he has he has uh, comprehended neither uh, or he has uh, he has known he has known the ten commandments well. He's walking with them onto his neck. Bible says uh, that now at this moment is now talking to is now talking to the disciples. And the Bible says uh, that when he was talking to the disciples, uh, he is now making things to be somehow easy for. For them to understand. He's now making same things not for them to understand because now their disciples were working with him always. He's working with them day and night. They have forsaken everything for the sake of to follow Jesus Christ. My listener, my brother is following me today. Things have been made easy for you to understand as my listener or as the disciples of Christ. The Bible says that only if that you forsaken your mother for the sake or for God's sake or if you've forsaken all of your land or your possession or if you've forsaken uh, uh, you may be born again yes but still valuing land as the most important thing than even going to heaven you may be born again yes but still valuing your sister or your mother or your father than the kingdom of God you find that now somebody even today saying uh, that I must go to the market center for me to do my business for because you are valuing that business than even the kingdom of God Bible says that uh, and Jesus and everyone who has left houses or brothers and or sisters or father or, or mother or uh, children or land for my name's sake will receive the hundredfold. And if I told you here today, attending to this message today, uh, Bible is asking you, have you forsaken your father? Can you forsake him for the kingdom of God? Yes or no? And uh, can you forsake your 
family for the sake of uh, for the name's sake for God's name's sake yes or no and have you or can you forsake the land for God's name's sake yes or no literally it's not all about uh, to forsake not even to stand or to help your family no it is not all about uh, to forsake your father not even to assist him in giving him food or no that's not the case it is not the case it is not all about uh, uh, to forsake your land literally not even to fence it uh, or uh, to build it or to uh, develop it no that's not the case it is all about a spiritual matter that you need to see them as just an added things but the kingdom of God is most important in your life that you need not to miss it just because you are protecting land not miss heaven just because you are protecting your husband not to miss heaven because you are protecting your wealth no but now if you can say that heaven is most important than even land heaven is most important than even my family heaven is most important than even my sons, uh, you will now do more than hell, than the what that heaven, the world is talking. You now do more for the heaven's sake. Now today, let me tell you, but we'll say that now. Uh, but many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Now. You may be struggling to possess the world, but now as you struggle to possess the world, you will end up losing it. As you struggle to protect your family than the kingdom of heaven, you will end up losing that family. And again, you will end up losing heaven and you will end up losing life. So as we're speaking today, are you able to sell that which you are having for the sake of the poor, to feed the poor, to give the poor, to help the poor, and also again to love your neighbor than how you love yourself? Let me tell you, my dear, that Christ Jesus is love. And whoever loves his uh, love Christ uh, should also love his or her neighbor. Now again the Bible says uh, uh, that uh, things have been made possible or have been made easy for you. That the same way as it is possible for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle it is still also possible for you who is now here today listening for you to enter heaven if at all you will adhere to what Jesus is now talking to us. One is that uh, you need to forsake the uh, uh, your first family or your possession or to, to, to forsake what that you are uh, valuing as the most, most important than whatever that you may do. Let me tell you that if I tell you now uh, 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 you will now say that I want to follow Christ uh, to the deepest uh, I want to follow Christ uh, to the deepest of my heart. That does not mean that you shall now not even help your father. That does not mean that you shall not even take care of your family. That does not not mean that you shall not take care of your buildings or other or 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 even to develop your property no it is all about uh uh, uh, considering heaven more than the worldly things, uh, more than the humanity, or rather to, to consider heaven more than whom you see that is your mother or your father or your family member. So now to just want to pray together that can you forsake business and go to church? Many have gone to business in order for them to acquire money today. Many have said that I cannot lose money today just because I'm going to the church. Many have said that I cannot lose my husband just because I'm joining that ministry. If I go to that ministry, he will chase me away. If I go into the church that which is preaching the gospel of salvation, and that man is valuing Catholic or whichever that may be, I don't, I don't mean that Catholic is so bad, no. But now, it is all about uh, to consider heaven more than that which you are having in your life. You know, many people say that if at all uh, I may go to support that my brother, my husband will leave me. Or if I stand with my family, my wife will now leave me. If I go to support my 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 my, my sister, my 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 brother will forsake me. Now, if I have been getting some, some support from America or some donors from where I, where I may get, but now because they've given me a decree or some rules or some statutes that are, you should not do this for us to support you. You know, some people normally 
say, okay, there are some a certain woman who say who was told by a certain ministry that you know you need to forsake that church that which you are going to for us to employ your husband, for us to, to employ your husband. You need to leave that ministry for you to join our ministry. For in case you may do so, we will now employ your husband. That is fallacy and foolishness of the highest order. Let me tell you, heaven is most important than even that job. Heaven is most important than that business you are having. Let me tell you, even if somebody will promise you millions of millions of money and you miss to go to heaven, you will be doing nothing. Even if somebody will promise to give you a job and now again you exchange it with your faith that you not be going to the church or to fellowship with the Lord, that's because of going to that job. My brother or sister, you are missing a big thing in your life. So let me now pray for somebody that perhaps you've been having a lot of challenge in your life to say, what should I do in order for I to get to heaven or to attain the kingdom of God? Let me tell you, one, you need to forsake the worldly things and to consider heaven the most important. You need to submit yourself to Christ fully and say today, I want you to save me today as I'm a sinner and I want you to save my life fully for because the devil has been putting me into the corner for me to serve him and he's blackmailing me. Uh, some people can blackmail you and tell you that, you know, you for you to get our, our support, you must also bow to our rules. You must also bow to our requirements. Now I want to tell you, you need to forsake it. I remember some days before I get off to my service or to finish my service, let me read the book of um, Hebrew, then we shall pray together. The book of Hebrew number 11, verse number number 11 uh -huh. chapter number 11 let me go straight. Uh, 11 is all about uh, what Moses did. Uh, yes. By faith, when he was born... He was hidden for three days. That's now verse 23. The book of uh, uh, Hebrew, uh, chapter number 11, verse number 23, says, uh, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that uh, the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's addict. That's not the fact as such. Now my point is at verse number 24. It says, By faith, uh, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth uh, than uh, the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is so powerful, so powerful, so powerful. Let me repeat it again for clarity purposes. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to, mis to be mistreated with the people of God than to, to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of, la of sin. Uh, he, he considered to re the, the reproach of Christ uh, greater wealth uh, than the treasures of Egypt. Uh, oh, hallelujah. For he was looking for the reward. Do we want a reward from God? You know, Moses was also of the same kind. He was saying that uh, I cannot uh, be blackmailed by Egyptian daughter, or rather the daughter to the Pharaoh. You know, he was the son to the daughter of the Pharaoh. The Bible says that Mr. Nyula, uh, that this man Man, he said that it is better for me to suffer outside there than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of this world or the sin and to miss the kingdom of God, to miss the greater reward from God. Now, my, my brother, my people, you know, some people see that if at all I will follow Christ, 
my business will go down. If I follow the fullness of salvation, my business will go down. If I follow the fullness of that which is the instruction from God, I will lose my family. Now let me tell you, it is better you lose it, but not to lose the reward, the great reward from heaven, or for you to attain, to attain the kingdom of God. So for today, let me tell you, this is the greatest devil, which is bedeviling many people. Today, many are just in the church, halfway, just to please the pastor, just to please the ministers, just to please the member, or whoever member, the leader, the leader of the church. But in their heart deeply, they are not fully for Christ. In their heart fully, deeply, they are not fully to serve God. They are just but not to attend the church to please those who are seeing them. Let me tell you, my dear, as you attend that church, as you attend this service of today, as I'm here today with you, you need to say that today my life must change fully for, sake, for the sake of God. It is better I lose the wealth of this world but not to lose the, hell, the wealth of heaven than to lose the goodness of heaven, than to lose Christ as my savior. Now this one now, uh, uh, Moses decides to go away. You know things were well, things were enjoyable in this house of Pharaoh. He was being fed. Things were very much good there. The life was so great there. It was enjoyable. It was pleasure into fullness. And again, Matthew, he was the only son to Pharaoh's daughter. He was the only son who was to inherit the kingdom of uh, Egypt. The because Pharaoh had no son. Pharaoh had no any, anybody. So you know, he had planned in order to write the great or the big will for this man called Moses. For him to possess the kingdom of Egypt. And if that the case today, Moses would be still in Egypt rather to be the king of, king, king, king of Egypt or for that matter. I mean that many people see that it is not worth to lose the goodness of this world that's because I'm following Christ that is nonsense now you see the only person who was to inherit the wealth of Pharaoh was Moses because the daughter of Moses or, or the daughter to Pharaoh had no son neither had she gotten married but now again she was the only daughter now you know uh, King Pharaoh had already reached the menopause period and the wife had already reached the menopause period uh, that is she could not bear any child or neither could she bear any son so Moses was the only person who was remaining uh, he was the one to inherit everything that which was in town in uh, which, which was in the possession of the Pharaoh now may, it, may I tell you my dear brother you are the only one to inherit that business uh, you are the only one to inherit this world the devil has even promised uh, to give you everything in this world the devil is only seeing at you is looking at you. You are the only one, my dear. You are the only person that is looking at you in order to give you the possession of this world. The possession means uh, to have the sins of this world, to have to do us to be a sinner, to do everything that which pertains uh, to please the devil. My dear, my brother, Bible says. Uh, uh, that uh, he decided to forsake those and to go outside uh, and to meet the reproach uh, of this uh, he considered to rep uh, the reproach of Christ uh, greater wealth uh, than the patricians of Egypt uh, for he was looking to be uh, looking to the reward oh hallelujah he was looking for the reward the reward oh hallelujah better him who can persevere to the end for there is a reward therein after better for him who can persevere to the last minute for there is a greater reward 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 that which is from heaven let me tell you my dear can you persevere challenges where you are can you persevere reproaches can you persevere insults that which people shall even insult you they shall 
shall even nickname you. Bad names. They shall say that you are a backward person. You are a failed person in the society. They shall see you as a person who is not even worth it. Let me tell you. Better for you to attain such an insult. But for you to get the reward therein after. Now there is a reward after this. And if after that the case. I want to pray together with you. That spirit of, uh, of shaky shaky. And feeling that you are so much defeated. You want to get back to backslide, to go into the world, to possess the world, to possess that which the world is having. Let me now tell you, stop it. May I tell you to stand still and to remain into the faith and say better to attain the kingdom of heaven than to attain the worldly things. This is the word of the day. I want to pray together with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the most high God, the king of kings. You've never failed in every mission that you have, in every plan that you are having, in everything that you are planning. My God, I want to thank for this service of today. I committed to my listener, oh, those who are attending this service today, how I pray that Lord, you shall strengthen those who are weak in the spirit, for them to stand firm, for them to stand to persevere challenges. Let them stand as to persevere challenges. Let them to stand firm and to stand to rise and for them to rise and to follow the good things of the heaven. Lord, I pray you shall heal those who are weak in the faith. You shall strengthen them, those who are weak in the faith. How I pray that those who are weak, who are sick, you shall heal them. How I pray that those who are down in the businesses, they shall stand strong. Their business shall sprout again. How I pray that those who are having no money, they shall have money. Those who have been evicted from their job because of the faith. My father, you shall give them an alternative for them to get a good job. How I pray that my father, you shall heal our dear sister who is suffering from that leukemia. She is suffering from that anemia. She is suffering from that cancer. I pray for my dear listener who is suffering from the pain into her stomach, into her belly, to his body. I pray for divine touch of healing. Oh my God. How I pray for those who are doing exam today you shall touch them those who are in the form four. They shall perform the exam very well. They shall succeed in the exams oh my father. They shall excel. How I pray for their family. They shall get money for them to go to university. How I pray father. They have forsaken everything that they followed you oh my God. They shall now get the reward they are in after. They shall get the possession from heaven for their children to go into to university. For their children to join to the colleges. How I pray that Lord Lord, them who are following this message today, they have forsaken their whatever they normally do to teach and every day in order to follow this service. I pray for fullness of the word from you. May you, Father, attack them with your heaven. May you attack them with your heaven. May you attack them with your heaven. God, I pray for your hand for the prosperity. I pray for the hand of blessings. I pray for the hand of healing. How I pray for the hand of breakthrough. I pray for the hand of reward. I pray for the hand of revival. How I pray for the miracle to happen to my listener. I pray for miracle to happen to that who is sick, who is feeling so much sick. I pray for the one who is feeling uh, so much down the spirit, uh, the one who has been challenged uh, by the devil, the one who has been blackmailed uh, by the Illuminati. Now today, pray for your hand of, re uh, uh, of your hand of reward, a hand of revival, a hand of breakthrough. May you God touch my sister, touch my listener, touch her, touch her, touch her today. May you touch that business, touch that business, my dear sister, may you touch her today. Lord, I pray for your hand of victory. I pray for your hand of miracle. I pray for your hand that which can set her free from every attack. She has been in the hospital for a long time. Now it is enough. Enough is enough. Now we call for uh, upon uh, your healing. Uh, for that person who is in the hospital, uh, who is feeling so much sicker. Uh, I pray for your hand of healing.
saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, may you touch my brother who is held into accident. May you, may you join those limbs. May you join those bones together that which have been broken. May you bring them back. Bring them back into normalcy. May you bring them up, join them together. Lord, I pray for your hand of victory. I pray for my listener. He has been suffering for lack of money. He has been suffering for lack of job. He has been suffering for the lack of the business site. I pray for that house to be completed. It has been so long without the completion because of lack of money. I pray for that house to be completed. I pray for that marriage. How I pray for that marriage to be stabilized. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are the Lord, the King of Kings. You are the greater God. You are not the lesser God. The most high God. The greater God, the Father. I pray for your hand. Oh, power upon my listener, upon her alive, upon the child who is always sickling. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for that cancer to be healed. I pray for that HIV to be healed. I pray for that leprosy to be healed. I pray for that uh, epilepsy to be healed. I pray for that state of madness to be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Almighty. Father, thank you. I worship you, Jesus. You've never failed. You've never been defeated. Thank you, my God. I praise you. I honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. May God bless you wherever you are. And you cannot even give an offering uh, to, uh, to serve God. In order for God to bless you so much, I will pin down my number there that you can give your offerings. Perhaps if you feel or touched, you can give an offering for God to bless you. Each and every service cannot be complete without an offering. So God bless you so much wherever you are. Let's meet again next time in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.